Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick9G. I'm, I'm hot. I gotta take this off. Sorry. I'm here doing uh, another lesson, another flight lesson. Uh, but before I get to that, let me just get this sweater off. It is super hot. Ah, much, much better. So hopefully you guys and gals are doing okay. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited to go on another lesson. Uh, to recap what's going on, I am getting my private pilot's license. I thank you for all those who are supporting me. A lot of you are really, really, really supporting my videos, showing views, giving comments, positive comments. Like, those really uplift me up. Like, let me tell you, I could name a lot of you, but it's just so many people have done it, and I try to respond to you in the comments. But it really does mean a lot, because I've been looking online, because I get frustrated sometimes. Um, but apparently it's a very common thing to get frustrated while learning something like this, like flying or learning even how to drive stick shift, which I've done, but that was a lot easier than this, obviously. Uh, but other than that, I, I think it's good to know. So for any prospective pilots out there, it does take time. I know people who are older than myself, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s to learn, that are learning how to fly, and they have their frustrations, and even uh, you could be 16 and learn how to fly, and I'm sure there's frustrations there. So it's just a part of it. Some people pick up things a little quicker, some people, we all have different strengths and weaknesses, and so I'm excited here. I am glad that I'm on this journey. I'm glad that I'm even able to fly. Some people can't afford this, and, and I'm very fortunate uh, to be doing this. So for those of you who can't fly for whatever reason, whether it's money, whether it's maybe physically you can't anymore, you know, uh, some uh, people can't fly because uh, they're not as sharp. You know, when they get to an older age, or maybe people, they don't live next to an airport, whatever it might be, whatever the reason, hopefully you can see my journey and kind of you know, watch what I'm doing and, and let it be like something for you, almost like you're doing it in, in another way, like if you're going on this journey with me. That's why I think it's so cool. So if you haven't, as I said before, go look at my number one uh, or first video so you can see how I get up to this point. And hopefully you see improvements, hopefully you see progress. Like I would say watch the first video again if you haven't and then watch maybe where I'm at now and, and, and my progression and I think you'll see that there is an improvement there. Uh, but we're not there yet. We're still getting more practice in and hopefully you guys are enjoying it. I'm trying to get different shots, different things for you so that you guys can see different things. And so let's get to it. Let's get flying. This is what I'm taking today. 195 Papa Sierra. All right, let's look. Documents, controls are free. The key is out. So this specific airplane, guys and gals, holds 30 gallons of fuel, 15 in each wing, so we definitely needed to refuel it for this flight. Sam does what would be the right wing if you are flying the plane, and then he allows me to gas up the left wing. Parking brake. Go. Brakes pumped, rudder pedals adjusted, master on, instrument on. Clear prop!
today was another day of traffic patterns guys and gals i know you may ask why so many traffic patterns why is this a common thing and why do you do them so often well traffic patterns combines one of the most important things for flying into one action so the idea of taking off and landing as well as getting the plane in an airborne position basically getting it from the cruising speed to a full stop and uh, the other way around in reverse in a quick manner uh, you can do traffic pattern in about five minutes if uh, there is not a lot of planes in the air so that's why it's really important to get these proficient most accidents happen during takeoff and landings uh, that's pretty much 50 percent of all accidents so if you can be really proficient at traffic patterns then you are going to be most likely a pretty good pilot of course you need to know the other things but these are the essentials here What's up guys and gals, I am back. I'm exhausted, I'm exhausted. Let me tell you why. Overall, it was pretty good. I would say that um, it was intense. For me, it was intense, not in a bad way. We did traffic patterns. We did seven landings, okay, seven landings. Um, he even told me, Sam, my instructor, he said five out of the seven, he said I was completely 100% hands off. That is him. Uh, of course, always, always, always in safety positions, which means like his feet are on the ready, his hand, uh, well, actually, he crosses his hand sometimes when I play. Uh, but the last two, so, so let me tell you and give you a little bit about more information because you've already obviously seen the clips of, of of the traffic patterns and so forth. There was, I would say, light to moderate turbulence today. Like it was the squirreliest and uh, the most. It, the plane moved the most that I've ever been flying, and I had the most control. And and so. What I mean by that is I had the most control of the plane at this time where it was so rough. It was, it was pretty rough coming in. And so there was a lot of fighting there. There was also a lot of traffic today. I don't know why. Traffic meaning other planes flying in the airspace. A lot of times that we were cleared to land and we were coming in basically in the last turn. So basically base, that would be the quarter, the third quarter turn before we make the final, um, the final approach. We would they would say extend your base or one time we were literally directed north into the the beverly hills area and we were going into mountain like literally they were like hold your altitude and continue north and my instructor was like just let me take controls and so what was happening are we noticed that the guy in the control tower was pretty much new because then he was handed off to another control guy that kind of took control and you could see that he had more experience but yeah, there was jets coming in. We had to, he, I had to be aware of wake turbulence, which is basically uh, the stream of air, the danger stream of air that we, if we get caught into, it could be dangerous when jets come in, that you have to be careful. So we took a higher altitude. It was just a lot. At one point we took off 
And we have a noise abatement procedure where we have to climb and then turn to the right to go over a golf course. Once we high enough over the golf course, then we can continue straight out. Literally, the control tower is like immediately turn left because the plane that was coming in behind us decided not to stop and they did a go around and basically they were, they were quicker than us. They were coming into our flight path. They weren't that far. Like when we looked around, it was like right there. So there was a lot of that. We had to do some 360s. That is, we usually do a rectangular traffic pattern. At one point they're like, come out of the traffic pattern and start spinning until we tell you to come back in. And so there was a lot of stuff, a lot of unplanned things, but I think that comes with the territory of flying in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is a very highly trafficked area, something where I would never get experience if, if I was in the middle of Kansas somewhere. And so I'm thankful for that. It will make me a better pilot. Sam said I did really good. Yeah, there were some things. There was one landing that was bouncy. And that was the one where it literally came in. It was like, bloop, and he took over. He did a uh, full throttle and we took off again. That was one of the ones where he helped me. Plus the last one, it was just, I can tell you the last three were my weakest. The reason is because I was just like, oh man, like <laughs> your body and everything, my endurance for what I was doing, my stamina for actually paying attention and doing that. Um, it just like runs out. My, my, my fuel level isn't that high, um, which he says fills up with experience but he said wow you're, you're getting really close to soloing like he's like I want you to solo soon and I was like oh jeez <laughs> so he says it builds a lot of confidence and um, I'm looking forward to it but I, I do feel I, I, I feel I'm getting closer but I feel I'm not there yet and so I'm sorry if I was kind of all over the place right now but I feel like my adrenaline is high I'm really pumped and everything and so usually that doesn't happen it happened in the beginning then as I had three four fifth lessons um, it wasn't that bad and today it was really high because I think I was really just amped up with all the turbulence and so forth but thank you so much again for enjoying this hopefully you can see my enjoyment hopefully you can see that you know this is it's almost I can describe it, it's like lifting weights it takes time you're gonna have shoulder pains you're gonna struggle you may drop the weight to maybe like okay that's horrible form let me help your form and so it takes time there's practice it's not an immediate thing I would say it's also like playing an instrument. If you guys, any of you are musicians, you'll know how that is. So thank you so much for your support. We'll see you all next time. Don't forget to stay positive and most importantly, be hopeful.